building this many houses on the water with so few docks. Continuing to turn a blind eye to Pixar's ceremonial sacrifice. Soil and greens is people! There will be other hints along the way, and yes, we know Wade is voiced by a person of color, but that doesn't make it any less obvious these watery assholes symbolize white people based solely on the way they just show up and spill out all over the place like a carnival cruise ship owned and operated by Columbus on its way to f the Caribbean. Clever, yeah, but does this mean that cloud airships can't transport anyone without packing the entire thing full of cloud people every single time? I mean, sure, human airplanes try to do this too, but if people don't show up, it doesn't jeopardize the entire trip for everyone. Having all these elemental races in close quarters for immigration is a nightmare waiting to happen. How many times has a water person put out a fire person? How many times has a flame guy accidentally started a brush fire in a family of soil people? Separation here would be an important safety concern, not racial discrimination. These aren't aesthetic or cultural differences. These are actual, physical, scientific differences. This is the problem with trying to create a metaphor about race relations and then giving the races involved actual fundamental incompatibility. Muddles the message, lumping concerns about safety into the same category as racism. How do we spell that? <laughs> we just go with Bernie and Cinder. Playing the changing of their names for laughs instead of acknowledging how little fucks were just given about the culture and history of the fire peoples. Cool city and all, but how does this Galileo thermometer building work? Are the interior spaces moving based on the temperature of the city? This seems wildly inefficient. <laughs> having to deal with unexpected bodily fluids the first time you ride the subway. They are chilling onto the subway that washes water over the edge every time it passes. We've been in Element City for less than five minutes, but even I already know that one of the most dangerous places for a fire person to hang out in this city has to be beneath one of these raised train lines. Bernie and Cinder couldn't find a landlord that liked money more than racism, so they ended up buying this rundown terracotta pot, which raises all sorts of questions about this housing market where people can turn away renters and you can also find a reasonably priced fixer-upper. Lacking all known biological structures and consistent of only fire, how exactly was this baby even conceived? And the same goes for the water and cloud people. At least with the earth people, we eventually find out it involves apple fondling. The movie wants kids to know that fire is fun. Telling your customers to go scorch themselves. If you were to tell me that the reason the Fire Nation wears clothing is to cover their private bits, then all I have to say to you is, liar, liar, no pets on fire. But I just want the free one. Sorry, that's not how this works. But the customer is always right. You literally took the phrase buy one, get one free and pretended that meant you were entitled to only the free one. So you're not a customer, you're just an asshole. Ember will now use her fire powers to form new glass from the glass pieces. And while I don't question her ability to melt and reform glass, I do question her ability to do it manually with perfect precision to fit this exact counter display this quickly. Also, she takes a bite out of one end of the glass and never reintroduces that glass to the fix. So doesn't that mean this sheet of glass would have less mass than the original? This scene is based on all those times you go into a bodega and the owner is sitting in the food. I splash this on your heart to bring love to the surface. Yeah. And I will read the smoke. Scorching tellers. Promise me one thing, Mary Fire. Ugh. That's terrifying. How did this moment not scar Ember for life? Can you imagine if right before your grandma died, she demanded you make her a promise and then she burst into flames and vanished? An act of God or an act of Claude? This little clump of dirt has more riz than I do as a big clump of man. Scene does not contain a new Final Destination movie. How? Oh. I learned from the best. <laughs> or you reset it while he was sleeping. I'm just saying there's not nearly enough validation or witnesses for me to feel comfortable signing off on this delivery record. Ember gets pushed to her limit here during the red dot sale, partly because all the customers are huge whatever is at the ass end of fire holes, and partly because her father is a dick who thought it was better for her to run the store alone on the busiest day of the year, as if it was a stress test on bar rescue. <laughs> movie will now become a cautionary tale about how you are not allowed to get angry in private. And if you do, your entire world will get turned upside down, and you will be convinced the only thing that makes sense is to move to another city with a guy named Wade. So be careful! Also, considering I've seen that this shop sells fireworks and gasoline, I'm gonna go ahead and say that you're lucky that you doing this in the storage room only resulted in a busted water pipe. That pipe squished me all out of shape. Did a Pixar movie just highlight a shapely water butt? 
I mean, depancing your animated characters is one thing, but going full splooshy tooshy is a whole nother thing altogether. I sucked a city inspector into our pipes? I know. Ironic, right? You said the word convenient strangely. First I'm sucked into a pipe and not the right citations I could get this place shut down! Considering this isn't somewhere you were sent to inspect at all today, I'm pretty sure the have to part of that sentence has a little wiggle room, splash hole. Flame! Well, I'm pretty sure that flame is supposed to be a swear in this world, but how did that happen? Does the water crew say drop when they get pissed? When's the last time you got super angry and yelled, skid salts? Riding on the outside of a train and then vandalizing your way into it once you realize that was a stupid idea. Her fire is hot enough to start his arm boiling immediately, but doesn't even singe that notebook? I think the heat of her flame has a plot dial temperature control. Also, sorry for the offensive language. Selling mud patties for seven when it's six for a regular dirt burger. And about half the population could make it a mud patty for free. This shop is my dad's dream. He will never trust me to take over. Why didn't you say that before? Oh, f you, Wade. You broke into their shop and then started immediately writing tickets and then spread it off to tattle like a small child. Sorry, the exposition of the family story wasn't convenient enough for you to not be an annoying water balloon of an inciting incident. Hey, Fern. <laughs> How you doing? Why does everyone in this universe have a name directly related to their race? This would be like if I was named White Dude, or Crackers, or Dave Matthews. I was about to send them to Mrs. Cumulus, then get sprayed for fungus rot. Fern probably doesn't need to get sprayed for fungus rot now that Ember's gone all scorched earth on him, and he doesn't even say thank you. Also, how did Wade survive that? Part of the movie, he will bubble when he is just near Ember. Other times, he has to be touching her for things to get steamy. And finally, he will completely evaporate from being in the same room for too long, just saying there's a difference between remaining cool under pressure and having a boiling point that changes whenever the plot needs it to. Hand peeing on your coworker's desk. What? Always trying to water us down. He was a water person, Dad, not just water. Interesting, so the people are made of water but are not water itself, but also can transform to look like water itself. This actually seems like a nightmare I had once where the walls started growing fingernails, so I may need a bit more explanation. There is a reason we left Fireland. A great storm came. All was lost for us. But when they came here, they got their start by buying a place that was in disrepair and fixing it up. So missing from this story is the reason why fixing a shitty building in Element City was easier than rebuilding their home in Fireland. We put everything into it, but then a great storm came. In cloud people, I may be learning the wrong lessons here. She's a huge airball fan and the windbreakers are finally in the playoffs. Toot toot! Wet farts. Sports ball games designed so that literally only one race gets to play, AKA America's first 150 years. Where is she? Up there in that skybox. That might be the world's worst skybox in the history of boxing things in the sky. It's not secluded, is in a terrible location, and you have to rub shoulders with the plebes to even get there. This stadium has severely misunderstood the desires of the rich. Yeah, jump, toot, toot, toot. Willingly drinking toot toot juice. Uh, Lumen? Yeah, a fire shop with 30 citations. <laughs> a bureaucrat who cares enough to not only pay attention to the paperwork crossing their desk, but have it memorized? Movie doesn't know how to government correctly. This is the playoffs, so forgive me if I don't want to hear a sob story about the problems of some little shop! We will be asked momentarily to forgive and forget this character on the grounds of her being overly nostalgic about a fartball game. You can see why I can get all churned up, but as a a cloud puff who used to come here with her dad. Oh, these wins mean a little bit more. As if that justifies insulting someone based on their race. And like, not being a gas hole wasn't an option all along. Well, that little shop matters way more than a bunch of overpaid cloud puffs blowing some ball around. I dare you. Say cloud puffs one more time. Cloud puffs. Is that a racial slur? Because I'd prefer any character you want me to give a shit about to probably not go around using racial slurs, even metaphorical ones. We love you, Lutz! Come on! We love you, Lutz, everybody! We love you, Lutz! We love you, Lutz! Having immediate coordinated multi-row signs for an unforeseeable impromptu chant. This city may not be accommodating to the fire people, but doing the wave at a sporting event when the odds of it killing a spectator are this high is an entirely different level of not giving a f And Wade started this thing knowing full well the danger it posed to Ember. Check out who found the gift shop! Bragging about locating a place that they literally make it impossible for you to miss. How do you apply eyeshadow to a cloud? You got until Friday. 
If you can find the leak and get a crew to fix it by then, those tickets are forgiven. As the story transitions to a love story, I would like to remind everyone that Ember is only involved because of Wade's watery boner and that the massive failure of bureaucracy we are witnessing should in no way be her problem to solve. But I got you a hat. Why would the gift shop sell an exploding hat? Even if it wasn't fireproof, why would it explode? Rusty with a hint of motor oil? Taste test response for Natty Light somehow makes it into the script. Ah! No, absolutely not. We saw every second of her closing off that pipe earlier and we did not see a face or yellow shirt come flying through there. Also, she didn't even get up to the pipe to close it off until about 15 seconds after the water started coming through. So if you were at the front of that water rush, how did you manage to hold off on bursting out? Answer me that, Pixar! Answer me! Oh, Flame! My temper caused this! It did not! And Wade doesn't reiterate this nearly enough. Ember's ingenuity in building this hot air balloon from scratch is only eclipsed by the number of laws she breaks in the process. But we'll keep rooting for her because the movie has yet to give us a champion that is more worthy. More water! Go that way. Except the only way to steer a hot air balloon is by changing altitude to take advantage of different wind directions. So either you're just getting incredibly lucky with immediate and convenient wind changes, or you're lying to the children of the world about how hot air balloon travel works. Monsters. Nothing weird going on here. And the director said, let's have these dirt bags pick each other's apples standing right in front of a wide open window and then look all embarrassed for getting caught so the audience will know they're assholes. You okay? It's just... That building over there? He's gonna unlock a core memory from her past and force us into a flashback position about it. But they said our fire was too dangerous and they wouldn't let us in. Listen, I saw my neighbor's house go up in flames. It was one of the scariest things I've ever seen in my life. The intensity of the heat I felt in my face from across the street is something I will never forget. So even though I get the point the movie is trying to make, there is no f***ing way I'm just going to sit here and let you say that fire is not dangerous. And since I'm not willing to risk defending metaphorical racism again in this video, here's a few more sins that should cover the remaining balance. <laughs> what are you screaming about? It's water. We've literally seen you add to your size by just stretching through water. Just use your water morphing powers to climb out, crybaby. Also, how much spillover did that one ship create? Random sandbags are found right next to the random problems that happen to be able to be solved with random sandbags. Oh sure, now you use your water weight. This guy can't make up his mind, he's so wishy-washy. Do I smell something on Ember? Forget your voodoo love-smelling magic. How has this entire candle not melted while you're holding it? Yo, Ember! <laughs> Claude, I grew another one. This character seems to exist solely as the token sod character instead of being cultivated into fully developed topsoil that has a reason to be in the movie. We are two full minutes into this dating montage sent to a modern song and I got everything I needed in the first 30 seconds. Watch this. This guy thinks he is dash par and you sir are no dash par. Okay, fine. This movie is fucking beautiful. There's definitely a lesson somewhere in here about learning to embrace the things that you think might destroy you. But in the case of the Fireish, there is a good chance that this much water could insta-kill them. The amount of literal danger here dramatically overshadows any kind of symbolism. You knocked over three tons of cement dust. Half the guys still haven't recovered. That's not how cement works. You are city inspector? They are hiding from her father the fact that they are trying to stop the water from coming to Firetown. Ernie may be quick to judge and rightfully untrusting, but he is not an unreasonable man. If you just told him that you weren't there about his building, but about the massive plumbing issue affecting this part of the city, he would give you a chance. At gunpoint, yes, but still a chance. Food inspector? Saying this at full volume and this distance from the person you're trying to fool. No, 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 no. Inspect with your mouth. Of all the things that can be done with a mouth, inspecting should never be one of them. Your culture's food has spice and our white, I mean water bodies can't handle it cliche. Finger peeing in your girlfriend's dad's coffee mug. You see, the sun, which is a big ball of fire, is now approaching the ocean, which is a big ball of water. Except it isn't, because it's like 90 million miles away, so your cute visual metaphor means nothing to me. Let me just say that fire sleeping on log pillows is a terrible idea. Not only for the fire hazard, but also the dependence they would have to have from the dirt people's barbershop for supply is problematic. You're surprisingly good at your job. You're surprisingly fast for your age. You have no idea. Are they gonna f*** now? Do you die if you fall in water? Kids. Every building in the new city is built from just melted glass. That is an interesting detail, and in a movie about racial and economic divisions, it would be even more interesting to know who exactly built these glass buildings if it wasn't the people who can bend and shape steel and glass at will. Maybe after dinner we play... The Crying Game? I mean, it wouldn't have been my first choice for a family movie night, but you do you, man. Ember, when I met you, I thought I was drowning. Drip! 
I know. Could it be cool? Yeah, super cool, Wade. I could move out, make glass in a faraway city, do whatever I want. I don't understand. Being oblivious to your wet privilege. You're smelling love on me? This movie is gross. And then you must light these with your fire. And I read the smoke. Cinder was going to waste all our time with the multiple steps of this ceremony, knowing full well she didn't think Wade could light his stick on fire. But thankfully, Wade's water boner came up with this lensing trick to keep his stick dry. What are you doing? It's not so crazy. This is the exact same move my college girlfriend made to prove we were in love too. Although hers was less scientific and more just presentational. But my father did not return to bow, did not give me his blessing. Waiting until the last half hour to let us realize the story is actually about generational trauma and not inter-elemental relationships, but then also still making it mostly about inter-elemental relationships. This class starts to crack under the tension of the approaching third act. Why do we even have these? The idea of the fence isn't the problem. What's stupid is thinking that fences wouldn't have evolved to be able to keep these assholes out. Floatsy. Just a note that she's been holding this giant bubble that is larger than her hands underwater for several seconds now. Have you ever tried to hold a bubble that extends beyond your hands underwater? There's one bullshit bubble, baby. So how is he able to just carry the bubble and it doesn't try to escape to the surface? And there's enough surface tension on the inside to keep her pointing boots from poking through? Honestly, this would all make more sense to me if he actually was the bubble. Like, first he'd tell Gale to blow him, and then after that he would tell Ember, I want you inside me, and then... What were we talking about again? This bubble will now run out of air much more quickly than before because we're now done with the sentimental bullshit part of the movie and must get on to the tension bullshit part. Maybe we can. No. But can't we just prove it? Asking someone to prove their love by touching you. Element City isn't a real place I can visit. I cannot throw all of that away just for you. I don't understand. This train has been sitting here waiting for the entirety of this heated argument. I guess it's less important that the trains arrive on time, and more important that the third act conflict cliché does. Number two, I'm crashing your party like what kind of a jerk am I? The kind that thinks that self-aware bullshit like this will make us forgive you when in reality this grand gesture is something only a true asshole would do. I don't love you! This glass cracks to perfectly align as a visual metaphor for the fracturing of their relationship instead of a sign that this was a stupid way to fix a piece of infrastructure. Sorry, Wade, this isn't gonna work. Once you take someone's flower, they can never get it back. At least that's what my youth pastor said. You have been seeing water? <coughs> I... You caused leak and chop? I trusted you. Daddy is being mean now, so he can show love later, so we can be manipulated into being sad now and then happy later. This is not a playable vehicle in Mario Kart. I'm confused. Doesn't the overflow occasionally drain? Why has it built up this high? If it doesn't drain, even if the glass held, wouldn't everyone be screwed eventually anyway? Well, one-way ticket to anywhere but here. F you. You were a complete ass at the beginning of this movie, you entitled wet spot. You came back after everything I said. You were not the problem member. No, 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 no. Oh, wait. Bullsh**. Please. There's no way he got to that lantern, got some flame in, and then somehow got in here behind her in three seconds between the lantern getting swept away and the fire toppling into this room. That's some of the most moviest bullshit to move from a bull. But your water. We just saw you enter through a freaking keyhole in a door. You can flow your way up through those bricks. No problem, right? But I can't exist in a world without you. Oh, but you really can't. An old man on his deathbed remembers the summer he fell in love. <laughs> Is condensation based on emotional engagement? I must have missed that day in science class. The earlier evaporation wasn't emotion based, so other than Pixar's got a Pixar, why would the condensation be? I don't understand. What's going on? Well, we had thought that the movie actually committed to killing off a character, but now that all the lessons have been learned, they can backpedal that meaningful sacrifice into a question about how exactly do water people die? Your, uh... Chimney needs cleaning. Deciding your first act after coming back to life should be to give euphemistic personal advice to your girlfriend. The hour and a half of playing up just how shocked everyone is about this pairing completely ignores the quiet population that frequently peruses the inter-element category of compound hub. I can't believe I was gonna shut this place down. Gail decides, now that she is against racism, she can move on to gentrification. Fern, you're a Windbreakers fan? Dude. Dude. Sure, I'm glad we're getting this clear resolution on the plot about the inadequacies of government oversight as it relates to underserved communities. Powerful stuff, really. <laughs> Damn it, Pixar! Burn! 
Water. Earth. Fire. Air. <laughs> I'm still alive, but I'm very badly injured. This shop is dream of our family. A dream within a dream. Two levels. Then I've got to try the cold nuts. You're gonna love my nuts. How? Oh. I learn from the best. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too old for this <laughs> Pow, right in Acacia. I bet this is connected to that fluffin' leak. Language. And for gosh sake, watch your language. We gotta find the source. It's allowing a temporary dissemination of the code you carry, reinserting the prime program. You've got a little... sand. Not here, or here so much, but right here. He's a different kind of inspector. Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm a... Come on, bikini inspector. <laughs> You're smelling love on me? Smells like balls. You have been seeing water? <coughs> I... Water sucks. Gatorade is better. Hold the door! Hold the door! I don't want to run the shop. I know that was your dream. I don't want your life.